All right. Well, good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us online tonight for our Bible study. Looking forward to the lesson tonight. Uh, as we always do, if you wouldn't mind sharing, we'd appreciate it. Uh, we're going to go ahead and start with a word of prayer, and uh, we will get started. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this day. Thank you for bringing us through and to this day. And now, Father, as we've come tonight at the close of the day, we pray that you would revive our minds, bodies, and spirits, that we would be able to receive what it is that you want to share uh, to and through us tonight. I pray that you would bless me, uh, give me a fresh anointing. I pray that you would uh, give me what to say, how to say it. I pray that you would bless your people, that they would be fertile soil, uh, that they would be able to receive uh, the word as it is given tonight. Uh, we thank you in advance for uh, how you will bless the hearers and the doers of your word. We give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And what a day this is. Uh, it's a huge day for uh, our nation and the world as we have been able to inaugurate uh, President Biden as the newly elected president as well as uh, Vice President Harris. Amen. As the first woman, the first black woman, the first South Asian woman, uh, vice president. And so uh, we thank God for this day of transition. And uh, we don't put our trust in men. We always trust in God, but we thank God for men who God can use and who are open to being used by God. And so we're looking forward to that. We're praying. Uh, we need you to absolutely pray while we're celebrating. Uh, we need to be prayerful uh, for our uh, president, vice president, and their spouses and the new administration. Uh, we don't want to just celebrate, but we want to undergird them with our support, with our prayers. And uh, let's be in prayer for the outgoing president. Amen. Whether you uh, are feeling him or not, like him or not, uh, he needs prayer. Uh, he needs prayer, and um, so those who know the power of prayer, um, let's do that, and uh, let's pray for our nation, and that uh, all of the chaos and confusion and combating that has happened in these last several years, we pray that the Lord would allow us to come to a place of reconciliation and healing, and that we would be able to uh, amicably do the work that needs to be done to move our nation and this world forward. Amen. So uh, let's be in prayer for that. Well, uh, tonight uh, we are going to uh, get right into the lesson uh, called What's Influencing You? Hey, Ida. Uh, what's influencing you is our lesson for tonight. If someone could put that in the comment section. And so uh, influence is very important. I made a post about it maybe a week or two ago and uh, uh, just about the power and the importance of influence. And so uh, we want to talk about that tonight in the moments that we have. What's influencing you and whether you realize it or not. You are being influenced on a regular and continual basis. And uh, that was one of the outcomes of what we saw a couple weeks ago at the Capitol. And even what we're still seeing now is the power of influence. Hey, Monica, good to see you. Uh, hey, Reverend Marilyn. Uh, so we want to make sure that since we're always under the power of influence that we want to put ourselves in positions to be influenced in the most positive way possible. Uh, Brian Tracy says, be selective about your external influences. Your multidimensional brain is influenced by everything you see, hear, read, smell, touch, feel, or say. Don't miss that. 
Your multi-dimensional brain is influenced by everything you see, hear, read, smell, touch, feel, or say. So uh, the question uh, that we need to ask ourselves is what are we allowing ourselves to see? What are we allowing ourselves to hear? Hey, Charlotte, uh, what are we allowing ourselves to read? What are we allowing ourselves to even smell, touch, and feel? And what are we saying? All of these things are influencing us. So uh, let's give some definition to uh, influence. What is influence? Uh, the first uh, working definition I want to offer you for influence is the capacity to have an effect on the character, development, or behavior of someone or something. Influence. Working definition number one, the capacity to have an effect on the character, development, or behavior of someone or something. Uh, definition number two for influence. The capacity or power of persons or things to produce effects on others by intangible or indirect means. I'll give it to you again. The capacity or power of persons or things to produce effects on others by intangible or indirect means. And I want to deal with those couple words there, intangible or indirect. Intangible means it's not clear to the mind. It's indiscernible or it is unapparent. In a general sense, influence denotes power whose operation is invisible and known only by its effects or a power whose cause and operation are unseen. I know I gave you a lot of uh, and if you're trying to write all that down, I'll, I'll, I'll try to say it again. But intangible, I, want, I wanted to make sure we understand what intangible and indirect means, since that's part of the definition. Intangible means it's not clear to the mind. It's indiscernible. It's unapparent. And in a general sense, influence denotes power whose operation is invisible and known only by its effects or a power whose cause and operation are unseen. In other words, ladies and gentlemen, when you are being influenced, oftentimes the influence goes undetected. You don't realize you're being influenced. All you see is the effects of how you've been influenced. Uh, that's one of the very powerful things about what uh, the entertainment industry knows as subliminal messaging. Subliminal. Sub meaning under. Uh, under the radar. It, it's, it, it's under your conscious. It's not at the surface. So it's happening intentionally in an intangible way. You're not supposed to know that you're being influenced if it's supposed to be a subliminal message. They're counting on the fact that you won't know, that you won't realize that it's happening. And so there's a lot of subliminal messaging that takes place in marketing, in entertainment, in music, and they're counting on the fact that you won't know it's happening but yet you'll be impacted and you'll see the effects of it in your behavior, in your attitudes, in your actions. And so influence is often intangible. Also, that other word, it's indirect. Somebody say indirect. So we got intangible and we got indirect. Indirect means not resulting directly or immediately, or in other words, it's a gradual process. So it doesn't change you immediately, but the more you subject yourself to that influence over time, eventually, uh, in an indirect way, it will influence you. Uh, so it's intangible. You really don't detect it happening. You just see the effects. 
and then it doesn't happen overnight, doesn't happen right away, the effect of influence happens on a gradual basis. And that's another reason why sometimes it's intangible, it's indiscernible. You don't notice it because it didn't happen all at once, because it didn't happen overnight. So because influence is so pervasive and so powerful and can go under the radar, uh, you've got to be very careful about what you're listening to, about what you're watching, about what you're reading, about what and who you allow to influence you because everything you see, everything you hear, everything you read, everything you touch, everything you say is a way of you being influenced. So we've got to be aware of and careful as to what we expose ourselves to because of the power of influence. So uh, when one is under the influence of something or someone, it will be manifested in at least four areas. When one is under the influence of something or someone, it will be manifested in at least four areas. Area number one is in one's countenance. Countenance, C-O-U-N-T-E-N-A-N-C-E, -E, countenance. What is countenance? We hear that word in scripture a few times here and there. That's one's face as an indication of mood or emotion. Sometimes you can just look at somebody and say, okay, what's, what, what happened? What's wrong? You wasn't looking like that last time I saw you. You've been influenced by something. Something has impacted your mood. Something has impacted your emotions. And y'all don't play me. Y'all don't only know church songs. Y'all remember that song? It's written all over your face. You don't have to say a word. Y'all going to act like y'all know that song. But anyway, uh, influence can be seen in your face. Sometimes you're saying one thing, but your face is telling on you uh, because you've been influenced and then it's impact, impacted your emotions um, and it shows on your face. It shows on your countenance. Um, so countenance is number one. Uh, conduct is number two. When I'm under the influence um, of someone or something, it shows in my conduct. And in all of these that I'm giving you, it, it's not just influence is not negative only. In, there's some very positive influence. So uh, in the same way that we said uh, something wrong can show up on your face. It can show that, you know, you're looking more happy than usual. You know, what happened? Something influenced you. So in the same way with your conduct, influence impacts it either positively or negatively. Um, those of you who have the, the great responsibility of parenting can often tell when your child uh, has been influenced because their conduct changes. They, they start acting differently. You ever, you ever had your child spend the night at somebody else's house or spend the week at somebody else's house and when they come back to your house, they doing stuff they, they don't usually do at your house? And they, they saying stuff they don't usually say. And they, you know, it's like, hold on now. Hold on. You leave that at, at that other people's house. But they've been influenced. While they've been away, they've been seeing some stuff. They've been hearing some stuff. And it has influenced their conduct. And, and so they're acting differently. Uh, but in the same way, that can work in the positive. That's why it's good to make sure uh, that we're around positive people so that some good things can rub off on us and we start doing things that maybe we weren't doing before in a positive way. So in our countenance, in our conduct, in our convictions, or in other words, the stuff we believe, the stuff we believe 
can change depending on the influence that we're under. Uh, I know someone right now who is, who is struggling with their convictions, their beliefs. They're trying to figure out, do I really even believe in Jesus anymore? Because of influence they allowed themselves to be subjected to. I know a brother who was a, a Christian preacher, a good preacher, and now uh, he's in a whole nother uh, religious movement. He's he he know he denounces now the Christian faith, uh, but it's all because of influence. The influence he allowed himself to be subjected to, and it, no, it didn't happen overnight. He didn't stop preaching overnight. He didn't stop going to church overnight. But remember. What do we say about influence? It's intangible and it's indirect, meaning you don't discern that it's happening as it's happening, and then it happens over time. So over time, it just little by little, bit by bit, what you believe starts changing. Wait a minute, do I really believe that? I don't know if I believe that. You know, over time. So countenance, conduct, convictions. And then conversation shows up in your conversation. You ever been talking to somebody that you know very well and you've known for a very long time and they say something and you're like, where'd that come from? That don't sound like them. But they're speaking from their place of influence or, or how they've been influenced. They've been around somebody who's talking that talk. They've been around somebody who's walking that walk. They're, they've been around somebody who thinks along those lines. And so now you'll hear the power of influence in their conversation. What they used to say, they're not saying anymore. And what they're, they're introduced, what, ha what has been introduced to their conversation is something foreign, something different, something new. Because of the power of influence. Uh, so, because influence is so powerful, it can change my countenance, it can change my conduct, it can change my convictions, and it can change my conversation. There are at least four factors we should be considering when subjecting oneself to the influence of a person or a thing. I'm going to give you these and we're going to wrap it up. There are at least four factors, four things that should be considered when subjecting oneself to the influence of a person or thing. Number one, character. Character. Somebody say character. Listen, character are the moral qualities of a person. And if character doesn't matter to you, I'm afraid for you. Because character not mattering resulted in what we saw last week. Because you're allowing yourself to be influenced by a person who has shown no good character. Yet, it's good enough for you to be influenced by that individual. Character. What's the character of the person? What is the moral quality of the person? Are they a good? I'm not saying they got to be flawless. I'm not saying they have to be sinless. But are they just a decent, good person? Good people can make mistakes. Good people can fall. Good people uh, can, can have uh, moral setbacks. But when it's not a setback and that's just how you are, that's a problem. So you have to consider when I'm subjecting myself to influence, is the character of a person there? Or, or does their character suggest I need to steer clear and whatever they talking about, whatever they doing, that ain't for me. Because the character does not suggest 
that it's anything I should be influenced by. Number one is character. Number two, and, and it's somewhat related to character, are they credible? Are they credible? Meaning, are they worthy of belief? Are they worthy of belief? You ever heard the phrase, consider the source? That's speaking to a person's credibility. Do they have a track record for truth telling? Or are they truth challenged? Do they lie like they breathe? Are they given to hyperbole? Are they credible? Are they worthy of belief? What good reason do I have to believe this person? Are they credible? Are they worthy of my belief? Character, credibility, Third, are they correct? Are they accurate? Are they right? Are they free from error? I'm going to borrow this from, from my friend, Pastor Marcus Clark, who says everything that sounds good ain't sound. Did y'all catch that? Everything that sounds good ain't sound. There are some people, man, they got a way with words. I mean, they'll just have you spellbound with, with their gift of, of articulating and speaking and the, the way they say things. But at the end of the day, regardless of how they said it, is what they said right? Is it free from error? Is it contradictory to the truth that we know through the word of God? Is it right? Is it right? Is it correct? Is it free from error? And if you're going to judge whether something is right or wrong, then I have to have a barometer. I have to have something to judge it by. And for us, I'm, I'm, I believe I'm probably mostly speaking to Christians tonight, uh, but for the Christian person, the word of God is your barometer for truth. And if it's contradictory to the word of God, no matter how good it sounds, if it's not sound, you, you cannot submit to that influence. Is it right? I want to lift up this. This is uh, really good. Galatians chapter 5, verses 7 through 9. Listen to this. Galatians chapter 5, verses 7 through 9 in the Amplified. Listen to what it says. You were running the race well. Who has interfered and prevented you from obeying the truth? This deceptive persuasion is not from him who called you to freedom in Christ. Num verse number 9. A little leaven a slight inclination to error or a few false teachers leavens the whole batch. It perverts the concept of faith and misleads the church. And man, listen, I'm so blessed that the word of God is going to the world online, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, uh, whatever. It's so many ways that the word is going out. But this is a dangerous place as well because this is the season with technology that literally anybody and everybody can have a platform. They don't have to be credible. They don't have to be correct. They don't have to be a person of character. But all you got to do is get your phone out and push go live and you immediately have a platform. It's a, it's a wonderful place to have the access and to have the capability, but it's a dangerous place. And we've got to be careful as the church 
that we don't allow false teachers and people who are full of error and who have self-serving purposes for what they say that's not in line with scripture, not in line with the word of God, but they know it sounds good. They know, they know people are run with it and they'll just say it to gain a following. To gain some likes. Verse 7 says. You were running the race so well. You were doing good. You were in church. You were faithful. You were reading your word. You were praying all the time. What happened? Who, who interfered? Who prevented you from obeying the truth? Ladies and gentlemen. Watch people who want to interfere with you obeying the truth. Verse 8 says, that deceptive persuasion is not from him who called you to freedom in Christ. Anything somebody does or says that interferes with you obeying Christ, they ain't from Christ. You can't be from Christ and interfere with my ability to serve Christ. If I'm saying I want to pray and you and you tell trying to tell me it's better things I can be doing, listen. You are a deceptive persuasion. A little leaven. Just a slight inclination to error or a few false teachers leavens the whole batch. It perverts the concept of faith and misleads the church. In other words, you got to be careful because you can be in church your whole life and mess around and listen to the wrong influence just for a short time and you'll be right out to church. You'll be right out of faith. You'll be right in some other movement that is anti-God and anti-Christ and anti-Christian just because you allow yourself to be subjected to false teaching, to error, to perversion. There's got to be some qualifiers for who you listen to. There's got to be some qualifiers for who you allow yourself to, to, to get in your ear and to feed you. Got to be a person of character, a person who's credible, a person who's correct. But then, fourthly, as I close, you ought to look for constructive influence. Constructive influence. Constructive meaning helping to improve or promoting development or positivity. Constructive, y'all. If what if, if if what they're saying, suggesting, or doing leads to you doing and saying things that are negative and destructive, I don't think you have to be a uh, super spiritual or a rocket scientist to understand that influence is not constructive. It's destructive. It's negative. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 20 in the contemporary English version says, wise friends make you wise, but you hurt yourself by going around with fools. Wise friends make you wise, but you hurt yourself by going around with fools. Got to be constructive influence. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33 in the NIV says, do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. Oh, listen, that's just how they are. That, it, listen, it ain't, it ain't gonna bother me. Okay. And this is when I'm gonna uh, offer you one of my James Jennings-isms. Now, don't be smarter than God. If, if the Bible says, don't be misled, bad company corrupts good character, don't think that that means everybody but you. 
Bad company corrupts good character. You can be a great person. You can be a good character, high character person. And just because you continually expose yourself and surround yourself with bad company, that good character person that you were, we'll see you a little later and we won't recognize you. And it didn't happen overnight. It'll happen gradually. It'll happen over time. And you won't even discern it when it's happening. But because you kept putting yourself in that environment, putting yourself in that circumstance, putting that self under that type of influence. Hebrews 10, 24. So what, what does constructive influence look like? It's right here in Hebrews 10, 24. In the New Living Translation, it says, let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. Hebrews 10 and 24 says, let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and to good works. That's what constructive influence looks like. I want, I want you to do well. I want you to do good things. I, I want you to do loving things. I want you to do constructive things, things that help you, things that help others, things that build you up, things that build others up, things that display and demonstrate the love of God, the love of Christ, things that are adding a positive influence to the environment, to the business, to the organization. These are the things that we ought to be looking for as it relates to constructive influence. So in closing, ladies and gentlemen, I just want to encourage all of us in this season to be careful of how we allow ourselves to be influenced and who we allow to influence us because the influence that you subject yourself to can impact every area of your life. And so my prayer for you is that you be cautious, that you be careful, and that you be prayerful as you decide what you will hear, what you will see, what you will read, where you will go. Because all of it is influencing us. Amen. Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you, Father, for reminding us through your word that there are forces that want to influence us. And not all of them are for good. And so we pray that every move we make, every decision we make, every environment we go into, that we would keep in mind that there is the power of influence all around us and help us to be strong enough to make the decisions that we need to make in order to put ourselves in the best positions for positive influence. And Father, if we are even now under the auspices, under uh, the influence of negativity and destruction, I pray, Father, that you would make a way for us to remove ourselves from that influence so that we can do what is in your will for us to do, that we may live constructive, productive, and positive lives. And Father, not just the influence that wants to come on us, but help us to be positive influences. The places that we go, when we go to work, help us to be the positive influence at our churches, in our organizations, in our families, in our homes. Father, give us the grace, give us the character, give us the spirit of God that would cause us to be positive influences in the spaces and the places where you allow us 
to go into. And Father, we love you. We ask that you would bless every home, bless every family, bless every person that is represented on this call, everyone who's watching and listening. Bless them, keep them. I pray that you would cause favor and supernatural increase to come upon them. I pray whatever is wrong, that you would help them through it. I pray that you would give them the strength that they need to endure until you turn it around. Father, we thank you in advance for how you're going to move on behalf of your people. We love you and give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, good night, everybody. Thank you for joining us, and we will see you next time. God bless.